Hello friends, once again I welcome you to my channel. So till now we have seen instruction set in computer organization architecture course. Before that we have completed addressing mode and many more numericals on those topic. Then next we are starting with basic performance equation. This is small topic. See basic performance equation that will measure the performance right of your work. So what is my work? Executing instruction. And set of instruction is called as what? Program. So while evaluating or your performance, we'll be using one equation. And that equation will give us nothing but the time to execute a complete program. Right? So we'll see how it is going to work. So see, basic performance equation is the fundamental uh, for computer performance that will measure the CPU time. How it is going to do? We Here CPU time that we will be considering is the time taken to execute a program. So we have seen some examples of assembly language program till now. Say I have explained you that how to add n numbers, move n comma r1, then it was something like this, move has num comma r2, then uh, clear r3 for storing the results. Some register name may be uh, here or there, but this type of thing we have seen then some set of instruction executed in a loop. This comprises what? My program. So my program comprises of what? A set of instructions. These are what? One, one instruction. So see, these instructions, when uh, this complete set of instruction is termed as a program. And the time taken to complete execution, to complete the execution of this program is called as the set of, uh, sorry, the time taken to execute this particular program is the CPU time we are computing in our performance measurement. So the point is, whenever we have written some instruction, some instructions will be executed in, repeatedly in the loop. So here we need not have to only see the code written, means the instructions written. How many times they will be executed, that we need to see. So in my program, how many total instructions are there? those are actually executed. This is point number one, right? Because time taken for my program is nothing but for one, one particular instruction, how much time I'm taking. Say for appearing one exam, I'm taking some time. So see that time for appearing the exam is nothing but time taken for each question to attempt, right? Then uh, what is, uh, that, that is there. So how many total questions I have done, right? Second point is what is the time for each instruction? And here see, when we calculate the time for each instruction, it is not in our minute or second. We will not calculate like that. We used to calculate it like in terms of CC. CC stands for clock cycle. So see, suppose one instruction is taking three CC. What does it mean? When processor clock finishes three number of cycles, within that time, the instruction completes its execution, right? So for each instruction, time is given in CC. So what is this CC? Clock cycle. This is one clock cycle. So what is the time taken in one particular cycle of clock that we need to know? That will multiply with this one. We'll get the time taken for the one instruction. Like that for all the instruction we'll find, we can, we can sum them and then we'll get the time taken for my program. So see for one particular uh, cycle, what is the time? For that we can take help of frequency. F is the frequency, right? So F is the frequency meaning what? F number of clock cycles are there in one second. Yes, in one second. Then in one clock cycle, how much time is there? One upon F second is there, right? So this is how we can calculate the time for one clock cycle. So using these three components, we are going to compute the time taken for executing a program. The basics are clear. Next is see, CPU time to execute a program is say, Time not, uh, we are taking some notations. So T, right? Time for each program, per program. Time required to execute a basic step is P time per cycle, right? For one basic step. P is the time taken for one clock cycle. Then S is nothing but average number of basic steps required to execute one machine instruction. See, this move A comma R1 is your assembly language. Ultimately, it will be translated into the form of 1010 and that will be executed by the computer hardware. So this instruction is called as what? Machine instruction. So the time means the number of steps, means the number of clock cycles taken for this instruction, 
for each instruction on an average is s and ever this uh, cycles per instruction is called as cpi right that is a time for one particular number of cycles for one instruction done next is the number of instructions in your program is say n right so if we uh, then next one more factor is required huh, yeah all the three factors are there now we can compute t so t will be what number of instructions in your program multiplied by cycles per instruction multiplied by time taken in one cycle these three things will multiply we will get the time for my program right time taken by one program so cpu time will be what time per cycle is what p and your cycles per instruction is cpi right and number of instructions given is n we have taken cpi to be s right s that is cycles per instruction n is this one p is this and cpu time is t then what is p actually one upon frequency right so if frequency is r then one by r is nothing but time taken for one clock cycle right so your performance equation will be t equal to s into n by r right so s is what cpi n is total number of instructions r is your uh, that frequency where r is what clock rate so this is how we can find out the basic performance equation right that means how much time is taken by my program then some numerical we'll see one very easy numerical is there see if a 8 gigahertz computer takes 7 clock cycles for alu operation 11 cycles for branch instruction and 6 clock cycles for your data transfer instruction right so these are cc's are given means for this type of instruction we require this many this many clock cycles then we need to find the total time to execute my program where my program consists of 10 alu instruction five branch instruction and five data transfer instructions right so what i am actually supposed to do first i'll find out what is my n n is what total number of instructions executed that will be 10 plus 5 plus 5 that is 20 total instruction n is 5 plus 5 plus sorry 10 plus 5 plus 5 is 20 done next we need to find out s so what we will do to find out s for each of these instructions how much time is taken that will calculate that means how uh, that clock cycles and total clock cycles will find out and then we'll divide by number of instructions right that will give me the average uh, cycles per instruction so total cycle will be how much 7 into 100 11 into 5 6 into uh, 5 because 7 clock cycles are required by alu instruction one alu instruction but here total 10 are there so like this total cycles involved in my process is 155 and total how many instructions are there 20 so on an average one instruction takes how many clock cycles 155 by 20 right so 155 by 20 this we have done then next is r is given as 8 gigahertz right then now we'll put the because all the values are there we can compute our t easily so t is what s into n by r all the values are given see giga means what 10 to the power 9 right so if i'll take it then it will become 10 to the power minus 9 10 to the power minus 9 is termed as nanosecond and if you simplify this part of calculation you will come up with your 19.375 nanosecond right because processor is uh, frequency is 8 gigahertz so time will be very small time so it comes in nanosecond hope this numerical is clear it was very basic numerical right one more we will do so see in your program suppose a program that no program or a uh, a program or a, or a program task takes 1 billion instructions to execute on processor whose frequency is 2 gigahertz right 50% instructions execute 3 clock cycles and 30% instruction execute in 4 clock cycles 20% execute in 5 clock cycles what is the execution time right so total number of instruction is 1 billion that is 10 to the power 9 then what we will do to find this uh, cpi this uh, how many clock cycles for each of these three for your 50% instruction so 50% instruction 0.5 into 3 product will be your 1.5 if we we'll sum up them 
then we will get the S that is our CPI right because here we need not have to multiply each of them with the um, total 1 billion and then again while finding the average we do the division by uh, 1 billion that part we are not doing directly we are finding their values and we are adding that will be my average uh, this one CPI that is cycles per instruction and then R is 2 gigahertz so all the values are there we'll just put them and our answer is like this 1.85 second with the uh, 10 to the power 9 10 to the power 9 both now we'll cancel each other so it will be 1.85 second why this second coming though it is gigahertz because number of instruction is very very high 1 billion instruction so see 1 billion instructions are executed in terms of 1 point something second <coughs> next is this part <coughs> excuse me then next is this particular again same type of numerical is there 8 megahertz processor some percent instruction do this this is given so again we'll do the same way total number of see this time uh, 50 percent 20 percent 30 percent they are saying so total we are taking as 100 then their product will find out frequency and frequency means how many times they are executing and value means the clock cycles they are taking their product will take and some then we'll get our cpi and then r is given as 8 megahertz so it will be 10 to the power 6 so uh, this one 6.1 is my s and n is what 100 then r is 8 into 10 to the power 6 second so it will be 76.25 microsecond right so this much is there in this video we have seen what is performance uh, equation and then some numericals based on it thank you and if you are getting from my videos then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you